Hello and welcome everybody to Be The Walls Podcast. Adam and Vanessa Lambert and... Our favorite guest, Ben Jammin. Hey everybody, this is Ben <laughs> McMaster. McMaster of the universe, he's back again. <laughs> Bam, round two of the Ben cast. Yes. Yeah, it's great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. It has, and actually... Yeah. We uh, we were initially going to call this Cocktails with Ben, but we've yet to actually have a cocktail. It turns out we, <laughs> we just are not very good drinkers. It's just chats with Ben. I know. Which actually, is, tonight would be good since it's like, it's actually, you know, the end of the day. Yeah. So I would true. have a cocktail right now. But right. That's true. Instead of last time when it was like 11 a.m. <laughs> I know. Like, I got stuff to do. Yeah, like I kind of can't get wasted right now. Yeah. Well, what do we have? <laughs> We have like leftover Burning Man booze. Uh, I mean, there's, there's about that. 40 gallons of Bailey's. Well, <laughs> dude, this is, and, and there's that like bottle of Absolute, right? Oh, no, it's I think like we a, drank that. I no, think that's it's gone. still down there. Dude. Really? It's a two liter bottle of Absolute that we've been carrying one third of around <laughs> because we don't drink it. Yeah, we yeah. don't. Like every year, we're like, well, let's take this thing back to Burning Man and we go buy like a handle of Tito's and, and drink, drink that, that instead. <laughs> <laughs> there's this. Dusty ass absolute bottle that keeps making the trip all the way to fucking Black Rock City and back to Venice. Oh, just dumped man. out. Yeah. I don't know. Absolute's okay, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's I, fine. I don't really have, yeah, it's I'm fine. Not. I don't even know like what the deal is, but it just yeah. seems like when you have Tito's and like you have the handle and it's got a handle, it's just so much yeah. easier for pouring. Like, yeah. You yeah. Just, I don't know. You just gravitate yeah, towards the Tito's. Yeah, you just do it. Yeah, I think that's where Absolute fell down. They don't have a handle. They oh. do not. They, it's, it's got a like a little thing. Right? Yes. It has like a dimple. Mm-hmm. It's the little thing. Yes. It is the little thing. The user things. experience of the bottle. It's everything, man. The UX. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> the UX. Ben, the you're kind of a like pro in user experience. Uh, well, I mean, that's people pay me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I so, think yes. that qualifies you. That would make me a professional. <laughs> <laughs> user experiencer. Well, actually, this is kind of interesting, though. Cause, so tell, explain for the listeners what it is that you do do. When you're not Ben when you're at not, When you're not Ben at Vimify. When I do do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so I'm just a tech designer. I design apps and and that designing apps takes a lot of different types of work, you know? So you got to do the user research to see if, you know, you're solving a problem that people actually have and you want to see what the business scenes are and what the needs of, you know, just what problem they have and how we can solve it with tech. Maybe we can't solve it with tech. Maybe half of the problem is solved with tech and half the problem is solved manually. You know, it's right. all of those things you get to know when you talk to users and actually talk to people. So a lot of things I do is interview people all the time. Yeah. Like a couple of times a week or more, I'm talking to actual people, just random people I find to, to get their feedback on stuff. So it's a lot mm-hmm. of like focus groups and that sort of thing. So that's a big part of my job. And then I work with the designers and the developers to come up with a system. And then I take that system and then I test it with more users. And so Mm -hmm. it's always this, I get users into this feedback loop and it's just like, you know, designing it, building it, then testing it. And then, okay, well we have problems. So we'll fix those problems, design it, build it and test it. And so that's what I do. And that's called, if you ever want to know what that's called, my job is called a product manager. Mm. Oh, yeah, but I also code not to not project manager, but no. product manager. No, they there is some overlap, but yeah, it's product management. Huh. Yep. So, are you working on any problems currently that you might want us to weigh in on? <laughs> um, I'm wrapping up a project right now. Um, it's like a really cool app in the HR software space. Okay. I've been on that mm-hmm. for six months. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that's cool. I think there's, <laughs> there's like another project I'm coming up on. I don't know. Like these, this stuff is great, you know, and it's, it's, I'm, it's every single project I'm on. I've learned a ton about mm. this stuff, but, um, yeah, I'm still, yeah. I'm all over the place right now. <laughs> yeah. So like some so, things are obviously more inspiring than others. Right. And sometimes you're like, I just don't care that much about this, but it's interesting. But like the outcome is, I don't know, not yeah. something you're super pumped on. Yeah. I, I care mostly about the people, mm. you know, and I care about my 
clients and like I like their passion really rubs off on me even though mm. I'm not directly involved with the company I'm a consultant so yeah. mm. that's what fires me up you know yeah that's cool I can yeah. see that and actually I would think it would be kind of fun to work on something new pretty regularly like at least you get re-inspired reinvigorated and kind of like you get to like you said learn about something new that you otherwise probably wouldn't have ever dove into yeah like I get to learn about all these new industries mm -hmm. and yeah it's it's actually that part's really awesome yeah, yeah. and do you find yourself finding like, you're like, oh, you know, it'd be cool. Like you get, you dive into an industry and the client's trying to service one part, but then you're like, actually what I think you should service is this part. All the time. Yeah. So there's like cross pollination. It's like this industry is doing this mm -hmm. and they have no idea, but I have that insight because I worked in a different industry. Yes. So you get oh, to yeah. like pull insights from different ways of thinking that domain experts wouldn't necessarily know about because they've been in that one domain the entire mm. time. Yeah, that totally makes um, sense. I wish I could give like a specific example, but like I pull, I give insights from Vimify mm -hmm. um, all the time because I focus so hard on um, behavior change and how to motivate people to do something and how, how to get people to do something, especially in real life. Mm -hmm. Instead of just in an app, you know, because mm -hmm. I can motivate people to do behaviors in an app by incentivizing them with gamification and stuff like that. But then taking that and motivating them to do it outside the app in real life and then come back to the app and report that they did it. It's just like super mm -hmm. complicated yeah. thing to do when it comes to feedback loops and behavior change, best practices. And, and but I took that learning from the health and fitness mm -hmm. world and, and put that into um, like stuff that I've done for clients. I did this website that would incentivize hosts to host like these esports gaming nights. Mm. Mm. And so I did a lot of the stuff that I learned from Vimify and helped this company get all these hosts together and scale it across the country so that they would do these like community in-person gaming events with yeah. their game. Yeah. Wow. So esports is a term mm -hmm. that I, I learned very recently. I So I talking to a guy and he's talking about doing some work for Red Bull with their esports and I'm like, "Oh, when did extreme sports just become esports?" <laughs> <laughs> no. No. That's not the case at all. There's like Fortnite athletes out oh, there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's There's a whole it's teams. A thing. It's yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Esports dexter dex, super dexterous thumbs. Yeah, and they yeah. they just play the game hours and hours and hours and they become masters at it and then now they're sponsored and they're mm -hmm. professional and they get paid to play games to play yeah. games and they all play games on twitch which is live streaming so people watch them play games mm -hmm. you know yeah it's, it's a, a spectator whole new thing. In it's a spectator thing yeah. yeah 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 and it's it's amazing and so i worked with this company called supercell out of sweden and they have um at, for a time, it was the most popular game in the App Store called Clash Royale. Hmm. Clash Royale is like, I don't know if you ever played Magic the Gathering, like with cards. Mm -mm. Anyways, you have these, it's like this fighting thing where you deploy like a like a set of cards and and you can, it's kind of like a tower defense type. Yeah. Anyways, it's hard to explain. Oh, but wait, super, wait, I know what you're fun. talking about. But So each card has like a thing. Has there's, like a player a pl or right, some right, sort right. of like magic capacity capacity and yeah, you, yeah. you deploy it here and then it does its thing and then they try to deploy something else to counter it right and it's just it's and you have a tower over here that you're trying to protect and you're trying to destroy their tower yeah anyways it was yeah. super popular and they wanted to make it so people would play them in bars like all mm. over the country and stuff like that mm. so i helped make a website for that yeah for like a month it's such a trip, man. There's so many freaking things out there, you know, like industries and, and layers upon layers within the industries of things that you just have never even heard of that like millions of people are into. Yeah. Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. I mean, it's just getting old. Yeah. I don't know. There's just a lot more going on. There's so it's much going on and you just have to specialize so much in your field. It's mm -hmm. like, you know. You guys are in health and fitness and even within health and fitness, you specialize in, you know, a paleo ish lifestyle and, mm -hmm. and it's just, yeah, you, your masters at that. Right. Yep. Right. You know, and yeah. It's interesting because growing up, my mom was really, um, encouraged us to be well-rounded. And I think that 
it, it was really cool, but it, in a way that's kind of a dying way that you can be because mm-hmm. there's too many things yeah, out there's there. Too many things. You just, you can't, you can do anything, but you can't do everything, you know? And it really is. I think I was actually thinking about that this morning that as parents, I wonder if you like, if there's a conflict there of like really encouraging your kids mm-hmm. to really, you know, dive deep into one particular thing, or how do you actually even encourage kids to yeah. diversify their talents anymore? Yeah. yeah. Otherwise it's just like things start to get watered down and mm-hmm. what niche are you grabbing into? It's kind of yeah. interesting. It's a huge debate right now in the education field. Mm-hmm. It's like right now we've been promoting this liberal arts right. education, which is, you know, how to be really well-rounded, how to be mm-hmm. like a great, know human that can talk about all sorts of stuff and seem really cool but now people are like well is that really valuable in this day and age is Mm -hmm. this something that we can really get away with spending all this time you know studying things that aren't going to be productive for us potentially and it's a huge debate and yeah and I, i mean i think like obviously yeah you see it with tech schools and you know with kids sort of opting out of the regular traditional colleges and stuff because it's like okay, I'm going to rack up all this debt, but not actually have anything that I can use it for. So yeah, it's just really interesting. But so I wanted to talk about um, your experience with Adam because you you mentioned with Vimify how you get that positive feedback or getting people to actually, you know, have better compliance within the Mm -hmm. app. And I know that we've talked about this at length about, you know, kind of triggers and things that we Mm -hmm. individually battle with and the ways that we kind of have had success in different things. And you had a really successful experience with Adam Mm and doing the fat loss program. And I, I really, it was really cool because I think that especially, you know, when you started Vimify, it was called clean start Mm -hmm. and it was basically a paleo challenge. It was. And so you've really been in this paleo world and pretty hyper-focused on that way of being and Mm -hmm. living and eating. And so I just think it's interesting, you know, I think we're all sort of evolving into this, like, what is this new paleo for each of us in Mm -hmm. order to have success, Mm -hmm. which I don't know. Tell us about like when you started that process with Adam, kind of where you were at with what you were doing, Mm -hmm. how you were feeling, and maybe just walk us through that process of how that evolved over time with Adam. Yeah. So, I mean, back when I started Vimify, I was, I had had recent success. I'd lost 50 pounds just doing paleo. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And and at the time I was interested in wearable devices and just how I can really use all of this technology to get people to be awesome and and Mm -hmm. lose weight or do whatever to reach their goals, you know, when it comes to wellness. And I learned a lot in the process and, and Vimify has been, you know, just one of the most challenging thing I've ever tried to to do just because it didn't always go the way I thought, you know, even Mm -hmm. with myself, um, it's just really hard to get people to do something, you Mm -hmm. know, it's just, if they don't want to do it, an app's not really going to help them too much. Mm -hmm. Right. And the main thing I learned through this whole thing is that people and especially communities of people motivate each other to do Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. If you can, you know, get a coach or somebody that can hold you accountable and just make you feel safe in what you're doing is right for you. And then you get people around you to, to reinforce that mindset and just go down that road. That's how you become successful. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, Vimify facilitated some of that. And that's why we've seen success with people using the app. But it just really comes down to that. Mm-hmm. It's like you can have success if you get a great coach. Right. Yeah. And that's what happened to me because after my success originally, and I started MFI, but after a couple of years, I just got out of it. Mm-hmm. Like I wasn't engaged with my own app mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. anymore. And I wasn't eating well. And I just started getting, you know, super lethargic and low energy and just, it was just, you know, depressed, Mm -hmm. you know, I just didn't want to work out really. And I did still, but it was just, you know, not on any sort of cadence that was going to be conducive to results, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and then it was just, you know, last May, uh, just like had this random kind of comment to Adams like, Oh, Burning Man's coming up. What are we going to do? And he's like, and then it just blossomed there to a commitment Mm -hmm. for four months. We're going to, 
do this program right. together. The and burner so, bro down. The burner bro down. <laughs> and so immediately, immediately I had a coach mm-hmm. who was one of my best friends mm-hmm. and I also had a buddy, like a mm-hmm. partner to do it with. Mm-hmm. And I had um, a place to work out, which was your you know, backyard, yeah. which mm-hmm. was a block away from my house. And so I had, I had access and ability and I had motivation from um adam Mm -hmm. you know the accountability and i had um a potential punishment in the fact that um um i was i had fear of disappointing my coach adam who was my friend dude so i just i (laughs) laid it all out (laughs) yeah so whenever i think about things and i actually program myself um there's this guy named bj fogg that came up with this really simple algorithm to really figure out how to help yourself behave the way you want to Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's called bmat Mm -hmm. and it's behavior equals motivation times ability or accessibility times trigger Mm. and so i try to when i really want to do something i try to use that formula to program it in a way that i will be most able and most likely to get it done Mm -hmm. and so when i think about that okay i need to make everything that i want to do really accessible to me make it easy for me to do it and everything that I don't want to do, I make it really hard to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I get all the food out of my house. So I actually have to like go to the store and buy junk food if I really want it. Right. Right. And I mean, that's kind of an obvious thing, but most people don't do that. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you make it really easy for you to train and work out. So that everything's like you get on a program that's pre-planned. So you don't need to make a decision. You don't need to design your own program. You don't need to go to the gym and, think about what you're going to do you just look at your phone and be like okay this is what i'm doing i don't need to think i'm just going to execute boom Mm -hmm. i'm out in 45 minutes i'm off to work you know so if you can take out all the thinking and and front load all your thinking to like a planning session and then when you're in the moment you just execute right that's how you get things done Mm -hmm. and that's i focused on that really hard and i had a lot of motivation from adam and vanessa and it was it just worked and i was yeah. blown away of how how easy it was mm-hmm. and um the results were were great and the workouts were so easy too that was another thing like i i at first i thought nothing was happening because yeah. the training was so low volume yeah and i was like this isn't doing nothing <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> ridiculous. Like, yeah. i kept on commenting to that about you know um, Adam's just like, just chill out, man. Just <laughs> fine. It's going to be Let okay. And Vanessa is also like, she's like, maybe it doesn't have to be hard. Yeah. I'm just used to like crushing workouts for the last right. three years. Yeah. Yeah. So we were following some of Jay Ferugia's programming because exactly. this is like, I mean, I've talked about this a hundred times. Like if I'm going to be doing it, I can't be the one writing it. Mm-hmm. And he's like the only person, him and, and Mike Rutherford from uh, Kansas City are like the only two people that I've ever just like read their programming and be like, this is exactly what I would write, but I didn't write it. <laughs> you know? And I mean, they're both super talented. So it's like kind of feels weird to like say that, but it's true. Like this is, that's the kind of programming I would, I would look at it. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, this totally makes sense. Mm. But you know, yeah, just I, didn't I, I come just out of your brain. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I will second guess everything. I'm like, ah, oh, this is dumb. This should be harder. This should be this. This should, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, it's cool. So another thing that you had going, you know, coming into this is that you'd been tinkering. Like you get caught, and there's so many people that kind of get stuck in this trap. That is like exactly the path that you followed, where you were doing paleo, and then you did this, and you tried this piece of it, and then you try it, and you're like, ah, this isn't really working, so I'm going to go super low carb, or I'm going to try intermittent fasting, or I'm going to do both, and maybe you don't see results with that, and then the workouts that you were getting in were like super high intensity interval stuff, Yeah, you know, which it's great, and it has its place, but like that combination leads to so many just overall failures for people, you yeah. know, and, and for all kinds of reasons, you know, and it's like, some of the stuff that I thought was most interesting in your feedback from going through the, the the program was your motivation to train and your overall energy throughout the day and your like mental clarity and all of that stuff. Oh yeah. And it's like, yeah, man, you just got to eat sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like having all of these things, like all those things that you just talked about, like getting up and making it to the gym and making the right food choices and doing all that stuff requires a tremendous amount of prefrontal cortex, right? Like you're, Th- those are the hard decisions. Yeah. And like in order to make hard decisions, 
you've, you have to have the energy to do it. Like there's mm-hmm. literally a thing, you know, it's yeah. like that, that part of your brain is not prioritized from a fueling perspective. So mm-hmm. if you're low on calories or low on the appropriate oh. kind of fueling, it's really freaking hard to make the right decision. That's know? why I would get tons of cravings. I always get cravings yeah. when I'm tired mm-hmm. and like my mood is bad. I would get cravings for peanut butter panda puffs yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. that was my jam <laughs> your trigger well, food oh, well, yeah. they, and they solve all the problems in the in the short term right mm-hmm. it's like they fire up all the things your brain just feels that you're just like okay perfect yeah, yeah. this is exactly what i needed you know? I'm good. peanut butter panda puffs plus rick and morty oh man <laughs> done it's a deadly combination it's a deadly, it does deadly not equal abs but it equals other things yeah, yeah, yeah. No. that's like that's my heroin yeah essentially yeah. So one of the things that was really interesting that you talked about was like getting going a little deeper into your energy levels was kind of just having to retrain your brain that it was okay to eat more Mm -hmm. and that it was okay to eat more frequently to actually eat some of these higher carb foods. I mean, Mm -hmm. all of that stuff was a major shift. And I think this is something Adam and I have grappled with over the years too and seeing people grapple with because we get so indoctrinated into this low carb solution or that being the solution for all things weight Mm -hmm. loss and and you know and we Mm -hmm. all just get super down the rabbit hole with it so just talk about maybe like that process of switching over and how that was for you to to like allow yourself to eat those foods again well i was doing intermittent fasting i was literally eating one or two meals a day Mm -hmm. under the guise that oh this is healthy because i'm fasting you know Mm -hmm. and then but it was really convenient because I literally only had to pay for one meal a day. Yeah, yeah. No, it was totally. super convenient. I, yeah. I could get up and just go straight to work and not have to like make all the breakfast and do all the shopping and all that stuff. It was just right. kind of awesome. Yeah. But it just like I was so I was just like low energy, you know, mm-hmm. all the time. And, I, you know, it was awesome once I started eating breakfast and when we started, it was like a like a bulk type situation. So it was a lot of food. Yeah. Yeah. I remember just being like, I can't even do this. <laughs> so much food. I was so full. All right. And but after a couple of weeks, I was like, Yeah, this is awesome. Like yeah. I felt awesome. Like I I was crushing it at work. I was motivated to do all the things. Like my days were awesome, and I just felt good. Like everything was clicking. It was like it was like three weeks in the food and the training and I just felt like a million dollars. It was was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then I just, I was like, this is it. I'm going to keep going. Cause once I got to that point, I was, I was in, I was Mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was super motivating for me. It's like, I haven't, I haven't had a workout buddy in a long time, you know? So it's cool. It's, it's, it makes such a big difference to have somebody that texts you like, either 11:45 at night or like 6:45 train 7:10 <laughs> like yep well, I'm sleeping at both of those times but I'll definitely be up to train <laughs> You guys yeah. sleep so much I'm jealous uh, yeah. That's the that's the final frontier for you I know uh, yeah. You're close though you're you said 7 hours 7 hours and 15 minutes usually so you yeah. you just need to get yeah. that like extra 45 in I know. You're so close I know but it's been so hard I don't yeah. know why it's just yeah. like I always find stuff to do at night before I go to bed yeah. yeah. Well, it's. I think it's hard. I mean, we're trying to jam a lot of stuff into a day, like yeah. as humans, it is actually hard. Like yeah. it's a legit yeah. difficulty. Yeah. But but honestly, <laughs> anything over seven hours, I mean, it, you're you know you're, you're seeing ninety eight percent of the benefit. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's like the the people that I really worry about are the five and a half. Yeah. You know, and six like six hours consistently or like a couple days a week that are five, like then you're really starting to look at like some things might be going on. You know, you may not be getting everything out of your life that you can, you know, Mm -hmm. but yeah. So one of the things we've talked about you and I, Ben is about, um, the cravings and like actually noticing that eating more where, so when, when I first started paleo and I started eating low carb, I felt like my cravings really went away. Like there was this sort of, I don't know, uptick in energy and everything. My system started recalibrating and everything worked really well. But after a while I started noticing sort of the opposite where I just had a lot more cravings and it almost felt like this way of eating smaller meals more frequently, a little bit higher carb actually had that same effect 
that the low carb eating had on me years and years ago. And mm-hmm. I think you had a similar experience, right? Mm-hmm. My cravings, I track um, with mood. Mm-hmm. So when I'm in a bad mood or feel bad or depressed or something like that, that's when my cravings just go nuts. Mm-hmm. So it's like a medication type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I'm feeling awesome, uh, you know, about like physically and mentally and spiritually, my cravings are non-existent. Isn't that hmm. amazing? Yeah. yeah. And so if, you know, when I'm kicking ass and I'm doing all the things that I'm supposed to be doing and I'm feeling good about myself and yeah, I just, that's the place to be. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like this upward spiral, no more cravings, you're eating the right foods and then you're training and everything just goes up and up and up. And then suddenly you're at Burning Man, you look awesome and you feel great. You know? yeah. Yeah. Just like, and you're crushing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. the thing. It's like, when I think about like my motivation, it seems weird to like tell people it's like, Oh, you're trying to look good to go to Burning Man. Yeah. yeah it seems yeah, like yeah. shallow. I know. Guy, you know? <laughs> We've and, totally embraced the shallowness around it. <laughs> yeah. But it, you know, you think about like, well, why do you want to do that? Well, it's like, well, it's because I want to go and have this experience where I can, you know, potentially I feel more extroverted to talk to people and connect with people because that's right. what I really want to do there. Right. right. You, know? you feel more self-expressed. Yeah, I feel more self-expressed mm-hmm. and because I tend to be a little bit introverted and right. I don't, it takes a lot of willpower for me to talk to somebody mm-hmm. and I'll use excuses in my head to stop myself from doing it because it's hard. Right. You know, like, uh, you fat or you're, you know, you got a pimple on your face, you know, it's just right. like I've done that my whole life and so if I can... I just my thought I can get rid of if I can feel like I'm just feeling amazing about the way I look mm-hmm. then I can just get that out of the way mm-hmm. you yeah. know and just go straight into connecting with somebody without this voice in my head and be like no nope, you can't you don't get that one you know mm-hmm. it's like I look good and yeah. I know I do yeah and so you know I just use that event to get my shit together yeah yeah you know totally and I think Everybody needs that kind of goal in order to make anything happen, any mm-hmm. sort of transformation. They need something that's a time boxed goal. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's what they need. That's what I need. Yeah. 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 Well, you see it with brides. I mean, every bride wants to look good f- on her wedding day, yeah, right? That's a it's one. like the same thing. And I think that after your wedding day, there really isn't another sort of aesthetic thing that people are training for, unless, you mm-hmm. know, you're in. Uh, fitness modeling business, or you're yeah. in something yeah, that requires that yeah. but like for most people that's kind of and everyone has permission they give themselves permission to look good on their wedding day right yeah. like that's to- i think culturally everyone is like oh yeah right. you want to look great that's totally understandable i think for us it's like we've we've got to reinvent those things for ourselves right. and yeah. yeah it might be an aesthetic goal but along with that is coming all of these things that is requiring us to like work out get up and, you know, get up early and eat a healthy breakfast and do all these other things that come along with actually really taking good care of ourselves. So it's like, yeah, use Bernie Man. (laughs) I'm going to use it forever. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and there's a difference between, you know, doing some kind of crazy crash cut dehydration thing in order to achieve this aesthetic. I mean, and that's not what we're doing. I mean, we're fundamentally taking a really kind of intelligent and frankly slow approach to getting it all done, you know? And it's, I just imagine though, like if, if people found that thing, I mean, this is, this is kind of the problem to some degree with um, a lot of the fitness industry is that there's a million and one look good on your wedding day programs, you know, not all of which are actually designed to like keep you that way. Or, right. you know, get you somewhere that's sustainable and have some sort of an exit strategy from that pure aesthetic goal that doesn't just completely derail everything that you did to get there. Yeah. Right. You know, and like, that's the part that's just mind blowing to me that is not focused on more. Mm-hmm. Totally. Because it's kind of mm-hmm. like the most important piece, you know, right. where you're like, yeah. hey, you know, there's a lot of things that can get you to lose weight and lose body fat specifically. But did all of the things that you did to get you there is that actually going to be sustainable or supportable long term? And like, did you learn anything from the yeah. process? You know, right? So yeah, and it, ultimately, like, you're not trying to do you know do some crash diet and then gain twenty pounds back mm. two weeks later. Like, that's 
then now you're you've just like started from an even deeper hole like mm-hmm. i think it is it's about like intelligently spacing it out and i mean we started doing this whole burning man training thing in may like you said yeah, in it was may. four months like yeah, four months, was, exactly yeah, yeah it was not like a oh let's do a six-week thing it was like <laughs> so long that at times we we're like <laughs> is anything happening <laughs> yeah well i started gaining weight yeah, yeah. at first yeah. right yeah at first i was gaining yeah. weight i was gaining muscle and and i was just like i, I yeah. felt amazing but at the same time it was weird i'm gaining weight <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I feel amazing and I'm crushing it and I feel strong and all this stuff's looking, you know, pretty yeah. good. But I still had big love handles and I was like, mm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> what's next? But yeah. at the same time I was also there's I was making some mistakes. Like I was miscalculating some of my macronutrients. Yeah. But um and I was eating I was basically eating more than I even should have because I was miscalculating. Yeah. No. Right. So, <laughs> you yeah. were masking. Yeah. But at the end of the day, <laughs> at, at the end of the day, it all still worked out. Yeah. And like, all, I, I mean, for almost everyone, eating more, especially in the beginning, is almost always a, a benefit, you know? Yeah. And this is, this is one of the things, I mean, so what we're basically talking about is the precision protocol that is what I do in the, my men's and women's fat loss coaching or body composition coaching. And really, it does start out usually almost everyone has the same reaction. They're like, wow, this is a lot of food, you know? And partly I think it's because the people who are coming, you know, who are interested in that are coming to, to me for that have had a very similar experience that you have where they may have been intermittent fasting. They may have been super low carb and you're almost always eating less, like Mm -hmm. probably less than you actually need to be eating in order to maintain an adequate energy level, you know? And that's, like the that's sort of the trough that people hit and yeah. it's it's actually i think it's the number one like problem with intermittent fasting like there's so many good things about it but it's it's harder to do right than you would think because it's a shitload of food to pack into you know a compressed feeding window yeah I and just... for most people like once you get below a certain leanness you know if you don't have tens of pounds to lose 20 twenties of pounds whatever <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is um you know odds are you need to be eating more yeah you know and it's like and and in fact if you're relatively lean you should probably be eating more calories than you would if you're eating multiple meals a day mm-hmm. you know just because you need to bridge the gap yeah and so it's it's a it's a tricky one you know mm-hmm. and so especially for for um for guys it can be really hard to get the right amount of food in. So like for me, a maintenance diet's close to 3000 calories a day for like not even training that hard. And to fit that into two meals a day is an like uncomfortable amount of food. Yeah. You know, totally. Yeah. It's like, I'm just sit down and eat calories. Yeah. I'm going to sit down and eat like two pounds of ground beef. <laughs> for lunch <laughs> you know? you're like, it's a lot dude and yeah. it's, it's, it's uncomfortable sweats. you know yeah. yeah and i think it's been it's been shown pretty clearly now that i mean there's there are definitely some ancillary sort of benefits to the intermittent fasting piece but like from a fat loss and performance perspective it's really a convenience thing like if it fits your lifestyle and you're able to still kind of fit within this food quality macronutrient and total calorie goals there's really no significant benefit Right. It's mm-hmm. like you're kind of looking at the same things, but if, I mean, if it works for you lifestyle wise, then great. But yeah, it's tough, man. It's, if you got to put on a lot of food, if you got to put in a lot of food, it's it's a challenge. You know, you're eating like it's your job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what what's next for you, Ben? What do you think? What do you guys have on tap? Well, um, mm. truthfully, like in the past couple of weeks after Burning Man, I've been trying to stay on it but um i've been traveling and kind of partying i need to get back <laughs> on a mm-hmm. yeah. program yeah. yeah that has a goal yeah and we need to figure that part out yeah, yeah. that's what i want like a time box thing that has like an end goal mm-hmm. yeah that is you know it doesn't have to be something we just have to pick something that yes. we're into yeah. yeah and like personally i want to gain a little bit more muscle mm-hmm. yeah you know, a little bit more mass mm-hmm. and but not too much i don't need to be like big muscle guy mm-hmm. i'm already kind of a big dude mm-hmm. you know just yeah. naturally yeah um but it, you know i like the idea of like a little bit bigger shoulders and stuff like yeah that. Mm-hmm. yeah um, more mass yeah more mass on because you lose more than you think you know in the fat loss pro I mean, even maintaining it the best you possibly can you're still going to lose more than 
than you think, you know, yeah. and especially when you like, we just keep using Burning Man. By, by the time you get to Burning Man and everything's your Burning Man is a dehydration. It's a water cut in and of itself, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so you lose, Seriously. you lose a fair amount of mass just in muscle glycogen and water, Yeah, you know, while you're there. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you really want to hit the look that you're looking for, you need an extra 10 pounds of muscle <laughs> <laughs> so that when you're sort of emaciated, you know, then you still look like you've got some shoulders. Like yeah. my, my goal is to be able to see my abs, but not my clavicles. I guess <laughs> like, so this is like exactly what happens to me. Like by the time I get lean enough to have like a full blown six pack, my shoulders and my upper body just is like, has a hard time keeping it. So I have to put on a lot of mass mm. this, this winter. So yeah. That's, mass that's gain winter. Plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but I don't want to get I don't want to get like too much. I don't I don't want to put on too much body fat though. Like yeah. normally when I mass gain, I'm just like okay, just do it, you know. Yeah. You know, and I end up like fatter, and I don't, and it's not like it's a problem to come off. And I actually, frankly, most people wouldn't even probably notice, but I just don't feel that good. Yeah. You know, once I get over like 15 percent body fat, I'm like. Oof pull-ups are hard yeah you know? no, i'm heavy <laughs> <laughs> I'm really heavy yeah. yeah that's how i feel yeah. yeah so after when you guys get back from africa let's do yeah, it it's time it's time but yeah. i got a slight problem your thumb yeah i fell mm. off a one wheel oh the one wheel gang the one wheel <laughs> yeah see i have this i have this issue with with everything i do that i i just tend to push the envelope especially with sports and physical things like that's why I sold my motorcycle because I knew that it's just I have this thing where I just uh, I get this dopamine rush from mm -hmm. from from doing stupid stuff <laughs> and, <laughs> and I push the envelope because I'm like oh, let's go faster let's do this like I, let's see what can be done here and then and then I have to like something has to happen to put the like the fear of God in yeah. me. Mm -hmm. so if, with everything I do, this is how it works. It's like I go, go, go. I get better. I get better. And I'm like, now I have this confidence. Then I just, something happens. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. I'm very familiar. Now I need to <laughs> <Yes>. like <laughs> check myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this what this happened on the one wheel. I was like, man, I'm so good at this. Yeah. I am so, and I was like, I'm yeah, like, it's natural. natural. Yeah. I grew up like snowboarding and skateboarding and stuff like that. So I'm like on this one wheel. I'm like, this is awesome. Supernatural. And so I'm like, overclocking this one wheel because it's like once you hit top speed what happens is is you can't lean forward anymore because it's like a segue and so what happens is it tries to wheelie and get your weight in the back foot so it'll slow you down it's an inherent problem with segues and these types of things what happens when you go top speed it's like you could just fall over right you know? yeah. right and so i'm like okay let's play with top speed and <laughs> it happened like, yeah I don't know exactly what happened, but suddenly like the one wheel cut out or something like the, the nose just dove down <gasps> while I was going well Top over speed. 20 miles an hour. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I just tumbled and tumbled and tumbled. And somehow in those tumbles, my thumb got jammed, didn't break, but yeah, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Where were you? I'm out. I was on Olympic between oh, 11th wow. and 14th oh. in the middle of the street. Holy cow, that's like a really <laughs> yeah, busy that's, that's area. Well, it's actually not that's so busy. It's kind of the beginning of Olympic in Santa Monica. But okay. yeah. it's not busy in the mornings especially. But man, yeah. I don't know what happened, that's... why that nose fell over. And I went on the forum. There's like a thousand people that this thing has happened oh, to. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. the same thing. It happened within like the first 10 minutes of, I was riding that thing. Whack. And you're like, oh. What? The, how does that's a possibility? And then yeah. you're very careful around top speed. <laughs> yeah, it starts to top weird. speed. You just don't even approach it. Yeah. Anyway, so so now I'm now my right hand, my dominant hand, is just almost useless, and mm. so I gotta heal this thing before we can lift heavy weights. Get too well, you crazy. have three well, weeks. You'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. And the reality is, like, there's all there's other ways to hold weight. You know. We'll just tie it around your neck. Yeah, <laughs> get some chains. We're gonna we're gonna go straight power lifter. Get some chains and do the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, right, but well. I think it would be cool. Um, there's, I mean, there's a few programming things. I might have to break my rule with programming because uh, there's a few things I've kind of been tinkering with with this sort of hybrid athlete concept of yeah. like super low cardio, super low level cardio and power and or like Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. And we just, we did a little bit of Olympic lifting right at the end of your yeah, training fun. session. It was pretty interesting. So we might, 
dabble in some of that, which would be fun. Yeah, it was super interesting. I, you know, I see Olympic lifting and I'm like, I never was into it until I tried it. You know, I'm yeah. like, okay, there's so cool. something yeah. here. Weird. Yeah, it's you know? very technical. Well, especially super technical. as a golfer, like you have that sort of lean towards technicality. Like that's true. You know, yeah, yeah I grew up playing golf, mm-hmm. and you know, when you start getting the technical stuff down as a child, you kind of forget about it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. and it, but it's all there. Oh yeah, it's and, very stimulating yeah. to your brain too. Like to be in, it's kind of flow state ish. Like mm-hmm. to be f- so focused that you have to like execute a movement so specifically. I think it's yeah. it's very interesting for your brain. Oh totally. And yeah. once you get, um, I mean that there's like this delta right of of skill and strength, right? And you're mm-hmm. already strong, you know. So it's like you're going to be able to power your way through a lot of crap skill. You know, but there, but it'll happen. Like you're going to hit this point probably right around body weight with the snatch where you're like, now what? It doesn't work anymore. You know what I mean? Like what I was doing doesn't work anymore. And how do you get it? And man, that's just this, it's this spot that's like, it's been the most interesting sort of mental challenge that I've ever tinkered with is like right in that spot where you're hurling your own body weight over your head that like you just got to, you got to nail it you know you got to get all yeah. that stuff right well because it's the fun. movements and the positions are kind of they're subtle yeah you know? they're not it's not a big thing it's like yeah. two inches your knees over two inches and suddenly that's it doesn't work it's not working it's know? very yeah. similar to surfing really in a lot of ways like the the way that your brain like can geek out on it and the technicality of it because it is these subtle little movements like whether you're too much weight in your foot yeah. too much weight in your heel mm-hmm. like yeah. your hip sways one way to the other like it's very very small changes but it actually reminds me a lot of surfing like that the very technical yeah m- technical movements of surfing yeah. yeah yeah too much power not enough power Exactly. Too much, not enough. Yeah, like, yeah, how yeah. is it possible? How could you possibly have too much power? Like, well, this is just how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> After a while, you just do it enough and you get the feel for it. And then, yeah, and you get the shoes, you start mm-hmm. taping your thumbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll yeah. be fun. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Benjamin, have you tried our coffee yet? I have not. Ooh. Do you have decaffeinated? We have half calf. Oh, yeah, you can't do the caffeine. Yeah. That's right. I have the whole caffeine problem. That's right. Yeah. The but I want to. Issue. I love the thing is, is, it's kind of a bummer because I love the smell of coffee. Mm. Did you ever drink it? Like, yeah, it ruined my whole life. Really? <laughs> for a while. Yeah, I didn't know what was causing migraines. So I had, I had chronic migraines like three times a week just um, as a teenager I and had you no would idea. drink coffee every day or I was drinking like coffee because back then it was the 90s and like yeah. Starbucks, Starbucks was, was becoming yeah. a thing and my mom and I would go get coffee and <laughs> I was like she would like she'd love it because she's like hanging out with her teenage son and that was cool you know yeah. right Aww. and so she would give me coffee and then and I was also drinking like Mountain Dew and like <laughs> yeah all, yeah all the soda all the stuff. and oh man and I was just just super heavily caffeinated and I was just having these migraine headaches all the time. And I was going and getting CAT scans. I was seeing a neurologist. None of them could figure out, like, what was going wrong with me, you know? And, and I went on this blood pressure medication Whoa. called propranolol. Yeah. Jeez. And it solved water. the problem. I wasn't getting any migraine headaches. But I would, like, every once in a while, I'd faint when I stood up. <laughs> like, straight yeah, up. Because right. it was like my blood pressure was way too low. Yeah. And that was just hell. My energy was all messed up on that stuff. And um, and then, you know, one day, I remember one of the doctors was like, how about you just try to cut out caffeine? And he's like, yeah, it's probably makes sense because this blood pressure medication is working for you. And caffeine spikes your blood pressure. So you might as well stay away from things that spike your blood pressure. And I'm like, okay, cool. Cut out caffeine. Done. Never done. done. Didn't have a headache like ever, and wow. unless I messed up and had some sort of stimulant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a trip. I know. Okay, so no on the coffee. So when no we on get the, the decaf, we'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but do you even do decaf? Nah. I just, yeah. I mean, it's just like some it's caffeine. a stigma. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I would think. Yeah. It's like I'm. I'm not gonna. You know. You know. I'm not gonna piss off the bowl. You yeah, know? yeah. 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 yeah exactly. No. You. I mean, you're living. You're living wild and free without it. You don't yeah, even mess just, with it. <laughs> but I love the smell of it. Like yeah. I love the yeah. vibe. I love everything about it. Mm-hmm. It was kind of torturous. Like I don't know if you've heard of Stumptown Coffee. Yeah. So the Stumptown's equivalent of a sommelier. He he was my roommate. Oh wow. Uh, my housemate in Portland, and he ran their um, cupping 
um, place where you can buy the yeah. really fancy equipment and then you go in there and the tourists would get these cuppings mm-hmm. and you'd yeah. also teach all of the employees of Stumptown in Portland about the different varietals and where they're getting them and how they talk about them to the customers. Uh-huh. So he's like the best dude to know <laughs> if you're into coffee, <laughs> perhaps in all of the, you know, the country. You yeah. Know? yeah. Just awesome. He was my housemate and he had all the gear all over the kitchen. Oh, geez. He's testing out the new crazy scientific experiment looking, you know, (laughs) ways to make coffee. And, and I just couldn't have any. And the house always smelled like awesome, you know, Colombian or Guatemalan or whatever. It does smell really like even, even if you can't drink it, I actually do think just having the aroma is like half of the experience. Like you're actually getting a lot out of the aroma all by itself. Yeah. The coffee is an experience. Yes. You know, and that's what I really appreciate about it. He'd make the coffee and he just like, it was his process in the morning and I just watched that. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's definitely, it's a ritual. I mean, it's like, it's a big part of the thing, you know I mean? And it's, it's interesting when we were, um, still kind of batting around the idea of launching coffee products. I was actually talking to Chris Thompson, our Mm -hmm. friend, who's the, the true brain guy. And we were just, cause he's, like the only guy I know that does products, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? That like sells something besides, you know, besides ideas and information on the internet. (laughs) uh, So we were just chatting about like what the process is and, you know, some of the ideas about, uh, about all of this. And, and he kind of brought it up. He's like, well, what is it? Like, what's the difference between, or like what keeps somebody buying whole beans versus ground beans? What keeps somebody from buying, you know, ground beans that they have to, that they have to brew versus like the instant sticks? Like what, why would somebody, you know, if you can get instant coffee, you can just pour in a cup and add hot water. Like why would somebody not do that and like opt for this other process? That's like this arduous thing of making it all. And I mean, there could be an argument that's made for the quality of the coffee and the taste and all of that. But I think most people probably don't quite have the palate for mm-hmm. it. Like, I, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think I do to some degree, but what it comes down to is it is the ritual. It's mm-hmm. the thing. It's part of the thing. You grind the beans and it's, you listen, you know, your coffee pot goes off in the morning. If it has one of those, you mm-hmm. know, an automatic grinder. And it's like, it's part mm-hmm. of this whole process that like starts up the beginning of your day. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard to get out of that kind of habit, you know? Mm-hmm. So even if you could have something that's like a super handy, <clears throat> excuse me, super handy, convenient thing, is the coffee still the coffee without Mm -hmm. all the rest of it Mm -hmm. that comes along with Mm -hmm. it, you know? Mm -hmm. Totally. It's not. It's not. I mean, it it is in a pinch. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. Those sticks come in handy in a pinch, but it's not the same. Yeah, no, no, it's not the same. And I mean, and it's one of the things that kind of got us going on this whole idea of doing the the coffee. And when um, Rob, one of our clients mentioned, he's like, you guys are seem passionate about coffee, which we never really realized until somebody from the outside (laughs) was like, you guys talk about coffee a lot. You know, why don't you like do that? And we did. And it, once we started kind of iterating on the idea, it was like, yeah, you know what? This is a really good way. I mean, we think about places that we've been. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, I remember that place when we were in Colombia and we drank this coffee and it was the best coffee. And mm-hmm. it's like brings you back to a time and a place like nothing else, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's the smell, yeah. I think, you know, so yeah. you can really get that sort of trigger going. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The smell, yeah. It, it always woke me up in a good way, mm-hmm. you know, just like that's what I want to wake up to, you know, mm-hmm. is yeah. the smell of coffee. And my parents did that too. And so I'm used to it. So, yeah. 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 Cool. Maybe I can get just like some, some, some coffee <laughs> and just put them around my house. We could, yeah. we could get you like a coffee smudging stick. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe we can invent something that I'll just release the coffee smell in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking there must be a candle or something that you could light that has like a, a coffee smell. Yeah. I don't know. Let's, well, you need one of those some... like automated squirters that oh, are yeah, in like yeah. public restrooms. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like every it's 20 minutes, they're like, yeah. like, what is that? What is that smell? <laughs> <It's coffee>. Best <laughs> part of waking up. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so, where can folks find out more about the fat loss stuff, Adam? And you, you've been um, doing some of this coaching, but you're also getting ready to dive into a deeper masterclass next year. We talked about it yeah. a little bit a couple weeks ago what um, yeah what's what's, what's the best the thing to do yeah. well so the the master class is definitely it's it's launching in january and so one of the things that that i've definitely learned from my experience with ben specifically and i mean obviously i've been coaching a lot of people through this kind of stuff but like ben and i have a relationship and being able to do it in person i was able to pick up on a lot of what's going on and and um what i've realized and i talked a little bit about this 
a couple of weeks ago talking about a one-on-one -on -one intensive that I did with a day is that there's questions that people have and there's things that about this that I don't think they need to know no that's not the right way to put it they have questions that i didn't think to answer right you know there, there's like parts of it that i take for granted or i just never really thought of it this way and at the end of the day i've got a really good program that's put together that i'm very excited to launch and to get people involved in but what i really need to know is if there's some aspect of this that you just couldn't miss so like if imagine you out there listening, if you were going to spend a day or two with me dialing in your nutrition for something specific, whether it's a body composition shift, uh, it's probably the most likely candidate of them all, a body composition shift. What is it that you need to know? Like, what are the two to three things that are just absolute burning questions in your mind that are like, no, these things I've been confused about, or I've tried this and I've tried this and neither of them have worked and I don't understand why. Mm -hmm. Like, what are those things? And the best thing that you could do right now to kind of be involved in this whole process is just click the link. It will be in the show notes. They're just going to go to a quick survey that where you can just write that in. And just give me those top two or three things. Um, and I just really want to make sure that I'm nailing this mm -hmm. for folks, you know, because I, my experience recently has been that I, I, it's just stuff that I didn't know people needed to know, mm -hmm. you know, or questions that I didn't know existed. And I'm sure that, um, you know, you're not the only one that they came up with that stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sure there's more of them out there, you know, so kind of mm -hmm. in the interest of what Ben does for a living, like, I want to know what you need to know. Right. Type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could just in a few sentences, remind me, what is the vision of the masterclass? It is mastering your physiology. Mm -hmm. So basically it's more or less nutrition it's strength and conditioning. Um, and it's going to look different for everybody. Right. But it's your own particular, um, nutritional piece to kind of dial you in for your goals, which is, you know, as you learn from, from doing this, like you mm -hmm. learn a lot about, how you work, you know? Mm -hmm. So even though we were trying to lose fat, you've got a real good idea of what it would look like to put on muscle. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, di dialing in and kind of nailing your own physiology around nutrition and body composition shift, and then the strength and conditioning piece. So what are the kind of key fundamental movements that you need to know in order to move well? Mm -hmm. Cause everybody's usually kind of missing one or two. It's like, mm -hmm. you're pretty good at pressing or you're pretty good at pulling, but you're missing some, thing in there, you know, so it'll be a deep dive into physical assessment and understanding the parts of your body that are maybe in imbalance mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, obviously prescription and coaching on how to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. And then fundamentally bringing it all together into what do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. You know, what's your, what's your goal? Awesome. So yeah. it sounds like by the, by class, you mean there's, there's a group element to it and an and yeah. individual element? Yep. Well? Yep. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the, that's the dealio. Yeah. I just remember the, the big thing, probably the biggest thing that, that set my success on its traje trajectory was we just spent a day and just cooked food together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just saw the way he cooks food and it's actually the most simple way ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, we just cooked a, a ton of chicken breast and a bunch of organic, uh, pre-frozen veggies and a big medley. And some sweet potatoes and an instant pot. Yeah. Yep. And all that took not that much time. Yeah. And when I got used to it, I would do all that in 45 minutes mm -hmm. and yep. then I'd have food for four days and I'm three or four days. And I do that like twice a week, um, once on Sunday night and another one on like Wednesday night. Yeah. And that food prep with, with you just, solidified it in my mind that this was possible for me because that was the hardest component. Mm -hmm. Like I right. just never really food prepped ever. Right, right. You know, I always just try and guesstimate by going to like Whole Foods and buying, yeah. you know, some stuff there. But I don't, but now it's like I have a scale right there and when I dish myself up in the morning, I just know exactly right. what I'm getting. Yeah. You know, and yeah. exactly, like I hit my mar macros like, to the gram. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and you know, I think people have gotten really afraid almost or shy of like weighing and measuring their foods because I think for so long people got so crazy about dieting and low calorie and, mm -hmm. you know, just suffering through this thing. But like when you actually re-embrace 
the scale, like mm-hmm. to weigh yourself, to weigh your food. And like, it's actually, they're just really good diagnostic tools to yeah, help you really know yeah. that you're on track. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's not about suffering through right. those things or like punishing yourself through those things. It's about like, oh, okay, I actually am hitting my macro spot mm-hmm. on. And then it's like, like you were talking about, you can check that box, done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't have to think about this anymore. Yeah. I know I nailed that. There's no like, it, there's no chaos in my mind about whether or not I did what I set out to do. Yeah. Yeah. I just pack all my food in the morning. I, I think about it, you know, in the morning and then the rest of the day, I don't have to think about it. Mm-hmm. I don't have to make a decision because I've already made it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, and it works. This is the food I'm going to eat today. And that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm going to eat. This is it. Yeah. And the, well, and the, yeah, a lot of the feedback I get is that people don't, or people have, fewer cravings or an emotional cravings and stuff like that too, because it's already set in their mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is what I'm eating today. Yeah. So I don't even, and I'm just going to eat just gonna again. Eat it. Like that's yeah. the thing that really helped me was that like the, the consistent eating is that even if I was a little hungry after I'd eat, I'd be like, Oh, it's okay. I'm just going to eat soon. Whereas the, the intermittent fasting and sort of the like two meals a day had gotten me into a point where I was like, I got to eat more. Like it was almost like a panic. Like I'm not going to get enough food or like, so it was funny. Like all those things that really were beneficial for me in the beginning with paleo started working against me. It was really crazy. And I think that like, this is something I really want to impress upon people out there because we see it so much with people that like, if it's not working like it was, like it might be time to swing the pendulum or readjust these things because it doesn't, it like you can feel that way Mm -hmm. again. It may just not be through the same method. Yeah, 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 totally. And I, I mean, I think that's something that people need to keep pretty clear is that their diet's going to change over time. Yes. You know, and, and you need to, you need to have a fundamental understanding of why, why? that would be mm-hmm. and what you should change it to. Yes. You know, it's like, so you're doing this and then that stops working, then switch to this. So it's like maybe you have three general protocols that you have. You know, there's like... I do this one, I want to lose weight and I do this one, I want to gain weight and I do this one, I want to maintain. And if you cycle through that over some period of time, you know, and you, it every kind of keeps everything fresh all the time, you mm-hmm. know, kind of keeps you in that spot. Yeah. It's interesting how that so, works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's the body it's likes to things. be, it likes, it likes to be like reinvigorated. You know mm-hmm. what I yeah. mean? Like just like anything, unless it's just working smooth sailing for you and you're out there and you're like, Oh, it's working perfect. What I'm doing. Don't mess with it. Yeah. <laughs> don't, you don't have to change it. Yeah, totally. But for people out there that are like, yeah, I, I relate to that story. And, mm-hmm. and I know for women in particular, I mean, obviously you guys have experienced that as well, mm-hmm. but like women, this is a really, really common story is just that man, I felt so great in the beginning. All my cravings went away. I lost weight. And then suddenly now I have more cravings. Now I'm overeating and now I'm gaining weight. So it's like, if that is you, then it might be time to make some shifts. Yeah. Take a look at it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we've been saying this since the entire time we've had this podcast and (laughs) and beyond that, that, you know, there's the low hanging fruit that you have to nail from a food quality perspective. Mm -hmm. But then once that's handled, if it didn't solve the problem, quantity is the next place to go and it's it's not either or it's not quality matters quantity matters it's both both things matter Mm -hmm. and it depends on you know who you are and where you are in your journey which one's going to be the priority to get you to your next goal but you have to be paying attention to both you know yeah or else it uh, probably won't work long term you know yeah and i think that your that quality and quantity thing i think that was the interesting thing about doing this kind of diet and sort of eating lower calorie Mm -hmm. because you're not eating as much fat you know one thing you really realize when you actually do a dive after being paleo for so long is that we eat a lot of fat like it's just we we douse everything in oils and Mm -hmm. butter and you just before you eat avocados on everything yeah and before you realize it you're like no i add another thousand calories for or five hundred thousand calories and in fat to my Mm -hmm. diet Mm -hmm. and i think one of the things that the low fat sort of mentality used to do is that like you could just eat cardboard food oh eat this fat free low fat thing and then you'd be starving and you'd want to eat 50 of them because Mm -hmm. it wasn't actually nutrient dense right Mm -hmm. didn't actually nourish you but like this way of doing it you're eating whole foods Mm -hmm. you're eating sweet potatoes and tons of vegetables and and all of these super Mm -hmm. high nutrient dense foods that like you actually feel satisfied right Mm -hmm. and that i think is the the big shift of like marrying the really paleo sort of take 
and ma- and maybe you know dialing back a little bit of the fat or cycling some of the carbs. Yeah. It's like you're really kind of marrying the philosophies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's appropriate energy sources. Right. Right. So it's like sometimes carbohydrates a better energy source sometimes fat is you know yep, yep. and is it but is it dietary or is it stomach fat yeah you're gonna burn fat but where are you getting where it are from, you getting you know? it from yeah. totally totally yeah. well mm-hmm. this has been awesome thanks benjamin for coming over being our our podcast buddy and being our real life buddy anytime you know yeah. we love you you're next cheap. time we're love definitely gonna too. have to do cocktails okay. <laughs> <laughs> we keep talking about it but like it'd be good to get a good slur on uh, yeah a good slur <laughs> open up a bit yeah. Okay. And we'll have like we'll pre-funk one. Okay. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> I'm just, down just too. Make sure we get some mezcal. I in just here. can't drink yeah. smoke any marijuana, or yeah, else yeah. it will not be good. No, no, no. <laughs> dude. I, seriously, I, I think about that because no. I mean, I, I, I'm obviously a Joe Rogan yeah, fan. Yeah, I think like, about I, that I think, too. I, I mean, his podcast's amazing, and I, that. But how those guys can function whilst smoking weed, I just don't know. Yeah, like in and the, drinking whiskey. In, yeah. yeah, an intelligent conversation. Like I'd be like, I feel so weird and insecure. And <laughs> <laughs> do I look weird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is anyone looking at me? Like I would be so in my head. Is this thing on? Yeah. yeah. I would just start saying the dumbest things. <laughs> Going to like a story that, that has no like basis Relevancy. in what we're talking about right now. You know, it's just... Yeah. All right. Well, so we will not smoke weed. Don't worry, people. Yep, <laughs> but we might. All right. uh, yeah, we might. We might drink some booze. Another uh, fun episode with mocktails with Ben. Yeah, mocktails. <laughs> mocktails with Ben. Mocktails. Yeah. Yeah. So just a reminder, though, folks, if you would do me a huge favor, go down to the link and click through that. Click on the master class for and let me know. Let me know what's cracking. Yeah. Yeah, and buy some coffee while you're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can get coffee too, which is cool. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. And I don't think I will.